Hey guys, and welcome back to Stacy's Secret Life. It all began in the year of 1987. I was born in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Yep, that's me. Can't you tell? Same haircut. This is my dad. He's really into sports. He used to play for the Edmonton Oilers, and he's the founder of the Adult Safe Hockey League. When I was a kid, I remember Don Cherry calling us on the phone. I answered, Hello, Russell residents. And Don Cherry asked, Is your father there? To which I replied, Just one second, Mr. Cherry. It was pretty cool. These are my older brothers. They're seven and ten years older than me. So growing up, I always looked up to them. I thought they were so cool. They did everything together. They went fishing, they would go skateboarding. I was kind of left on my own to do my own thing. I remember one Halloween, I got all dressed up as Little Bo Peep. Once I was ready, I looked around and they were gone. They left without me. I remember I felt so uncool, but can you blame them? As teenagers, would you want to hang out with your little sister? So growing up, I spent most of my time with my mom. Yes, this is Stacy's mom, and she's an angel. I spent all of my time with her, and we became best friends. And to this day, she's still my BFF. Mom, I'm sorry this is a really bad photo of us, but it just goes to show how silly and happy we were together. She always taught me to look on the bright side. I remember often her car would break down, so we did a lot of walking together. I remember her looking down at me and saying, Stacy, I'm so sorry for this. And I said, that's okay, mom. Smiling is good exercise for your cheeks. When I wasn't with my mom, I was with my nanny. This is my grandma. She seemed like she had star status. I don't know if you know the show I Love Lucy, but I actually thought she was that woman. She was so outgoing, so outspoken, incredibly sociable, and just hilarious. When I was out with her, she would introduce me to all of her friends. She would tell them how special I was, and I felt so special. I really, really looked up to her, and because I spent so much time with her, I wanted to be just like her. Even though I had my mom as my best friend, I kind of felt like an only child. I remember not having any friends and having to entertain myself all the time, which for me was actually pretty easy. I had a wild imagination and I had imaginary friends. I had an imaginary friend that was a dragon. I don't remember his name, but this is what he looked like. I was pretty good at entertaining myself and creating my own special world, but I felt pretty lonely. When it was time to decide on what to go to school for, I said to my dad, Dad, I want to be an actress. My dad didn't understand this request. An actress? That's like saying you want to be an astronaut. It's a really, really tough field to get into, Stace. My dad thought I should become a teacher. So, I went to school for sociology. Why? Because I love people. I'm so interested in human behavior. Why people are the way that they are. How did they become that way? And most importantly, how do people accomplish their dreams? So I got my degree. But I didn't know what I was going to do with it. Like most people in their 20s, I got a desk job. And I can remember one day this woman celebrating her 30th year there. All of a sudden I could flash forward my life. Was I going to be an old lady sitting at a desk waiting to retire? There's no way I could not have done that. I had to follow my heart. I decided to go for my dreams of modeling. I called myself the model next door. I wanted to relate to every girl. I was not the tallest or the skinniest person, but I believed in myself so I could make it come true. I was in magazines and fashion shows, but really I was too short, too fat, too this, too that. I just really didn't fit into the modeling world and I couldn't make it a career. 
So there I was, mid-twenties, no money, completely broke, deflated dreams. I just felt so alone. Can you relate? It's really hard nowadays to find a job and to figure out what you want to do in life. Soon after, I had a friend that told me about a self-development course that could make my dreams come true. Sign me up! Even though it felt like I had failed at life, I still really believed in myself. On the first day of my dream class, I sat beside this really cute guy. He was funny, smart, kind of strange, but really charismatic. His name was Daniel. He really liked me, but I didn't feel good enough. So, he got friend-zoned. But, if you believe in the law of attraction, which Daniel did, here's a little proof. He attracted six Stacys to him that year. And one year later, I let him into my heart, and we became a couple. Daniel was very supportive. He believed in my dreams. He encouraged me to go back to school. I loved listening to people. I loved helping people. And I really wanted to help people accomplish their dreams. So I got into life coaching. While I was studying life coaching, I discovered that my school also offered spiritual programs. Not religious programs, but more about learning about your chakras and crystal healing and meditation. I know it sounds hippy-dippy, but it was a, a very connecting experience. I can remember one time while meditating, I heard a voice. It sounded like my voice, but it didn't feel like I was the one talking. The voice said to me, listen, share. No, it wasn't a creepy voice. Think more like Field of Dreams, if you build it, they will come. So while taking my life coaching courses, I continued to meditate and listen for guidance. I received my life coaching certificate, and on graduation day, Daniel took me out for dinner. He said to me, what's wrong? He could tell I was kind of down. I said to him, you know, I have all this education, and I still feel like, who will listen to me? How will I find clients? I just, I, I feel like I can't do this. Daniel said to me, well, I know you can do this, but what is it that you really want to do? What is your heart calling to? I turned to Dan and said, well, I feel like I'm having this ridiculous dream of being a YouTuber, having my own show, like a TV host, something funny but helpful. So Daniel challenged me to do 30 days of vlogging. It was tough. I'm such a perfectionist. I didn't want to post anything until it was edited perfectly. And I didn't know how to edit perfectly. I lost footage. My camera work was shaky. But eventually I found my way. And Stacy Secrets was born! I created a secret family. I have secret sisters, secret brothers, secret friends. I have a place where I can totally be myself and help people with my life coach. I ask my viewers, send me their secrets, their problems, their dreams, their goals to an email address called secretsforstacy at gmail.com. I create a response video for them in hopes to help them and guide them, but not only them, also the world! I feel completely myself as Stacy Secrets. I'm just able to be weird and quirky and, uh, and help you. And that's what I love to do. Thank you so much to my secret family. You guys are making this dream a reality for me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on my secret life. And go check out my other channel, Stacy Secrets. That's where I do all the life coaching. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, be yourself and love who you are. Bye!